In this video, we're looking at the Ole Miss offense run by Jeff Lebby and Lane Kiffin, and we're doing it by looking at their Week 6 matchup against Arkansas. At the time that I'm writing this, Ole Miss has the number 3 offense in the country, and they've gotten there with a run-heavy spread offense that has a ton of diversity in its blocking schemes. In principle, Arkansas's defense for this game was designed to stop this kind of spread attack. They chose to spend most of the game in dime personnel, playing with hyperlight boxes in the mold of a guy like John Haycock at Iowa State. In this game, though, the Razorbacks' dime look had no answer for the Rebels' spread rushing attack, with Ole Miss running the ball a stunning 49 times for 324 yards. There are clearly some structural weaknesses in this developing defense, and in this game, we'll see how the Rebel offense picked apart those weaknesses for 60 minutes on their way to a barn-burning 52-51 victory. To understand what the Rebels were able to do in this game, let's start with the structure that they had to attack. As I said, the Razorbacks spent most of the game in dime personnel, and in that package, they played with three defensive linemen and two linebackers. On the back end, they then played with six defensive backs, and those included Nickelback, who's more involved in run defense and underneath coverage, and then three safeties on the back end. This three safety looks the thing that draws a lot of comparisons with Iowa State, and for more on that, you can check out my video on that defense and the link at the upper right-hand corner of the video right now. Where Arkansas really differs from Iowa State, though, is in the front, and here what they do is pretty unique and essential toward understanding Ole Miss's run game. On the defensive line, they play with guys that the depth chart labels as a defensive end and two defensive tackles, but those labels only partially explain what each of those guys does. For the most part, the defensive end lined up to the right side of the formation, while the two defensive tackles lined up to the left. For the purposes of this video, I'll use different terms to refer to those two defensive tackles. One of them was a true nose tackle, who always lined up over the center, and in this game, that guy was usually number 99, John Ridgeway. The other guy's the one that I'll call the defensive tackle. He generally lined up to the left side of the formation and could play either pinched inside over a guard like a true defensive tackle, as we're seeing right here, or he could play outside on the edge more like a defensive end. In this game, that player was usually number zero, Markel Utzi. In practice, the alignment of the defensive end and defensive tackle was somewhat interchangeable and was based off of field position and the offense's formation. The main principle here is that Arkansas wanted to use a wide defender to protect what's called the run strength of the formation, which will usually be the side with more run blockers. So on this play, Ole Miss has a wing tight end as an extra blocker down here at the bottom of the screen, and so Arkansas is playing with that defensive end on the edge to this side. On the opposite side, the defensive tackle is then pinched down inside and lined up over the right guard. On this play, the run strength's flipped, so here the Rebels have an H-back as an extra blocker to the top of the screen. This means that on this play, the defensive tackle is going to be the guy that's going to widen. The defensive end, then, is going to pinch down inside to play over the guard. Whoever the pinch defender is, the idea is that it's his job to keep the offensive guard and offensive tackle off of the linebacker behind him. If that guy can hold up those two blockers, then the linebacker is going to be free to pursue in whichever direction the run goes, and we're going to see a good example of how that works on this play. Here Ole Miss has an H back to the right side of the formation, and so we see that the defensive tackle is going to widen to play off tackle while the defensive end pinches down over the guard to the opposite side. To attack this alignment, Ole Miss is then going to motion the H back across the formation. They're doing this because Arkansas doesn't reset their front against this kind of motion, and so the Rebels are thinking that they can set the H back to one side and force the defensive end to pinch down over the guard, and then they can bring the H back over to that side to attack the edge outside of him. On this play, though, that defensive end holds up well against a double team from the left tackle and left guard, and this actually keeps both of the linebackers free to flow to the run. That's the basic idea behind Arkansas's front structure. It's to keep blockers off that weak side linebacker so that he can add in as an extra defender wherever he's needed. So if you're Ole Miss and you want to attack this structure, then what can you do? If you want to stay unpredictable, then you'll need to be able to attack both sides of the front. So you'll need to have some strong side runs that attack toward that wide edge player, and some weak side runs that attack toward that guy that's pinched to the inside. Here we're going to see a play that attacks the pinched guy, so on this play, Ole Miss is setting their H back down here to the bottom of the screen. As we know, that means that the defensive end of this side is going to widen, while the defensive tackle to the opposite side pinches down over the guard. To attack that pinched defensive tackle, Ole Miss is running a blocking scheme called Down G. All that that means is that after the snap, the right tackle is going to block down on that pinch defensive tackle, sealing him off to the inside and creating a lane to the edge. This is called a down block, and that gives us half of the name of this play, down G. Now when the Razorbacks pinch that guy inside like this, they know that they'll be vulnerable to this kind of block, and so to make up for it, they're asking this nickelback to be a force player, meaning that he'll stay outside of the widest blocker and force everything back inside to his linebackers, who are those pursuit players that Arkansas is trying to keep clean. This is where the G part of down G comes in. On this play, G stands for guard, and it means that the right guard is going to pull around the tackle's down block, working out to the edge to kick out that nickel back. 
This creates a lane between his block on the outside and the down block by the tackle on the inside. Now, what about that linebacker that Arkansas is trying to free up in pursuit? Well, to take care of him, Ole Miss is just pulling their H back across the formation and leading him up through that lane. Here we'll see him get a good hit on that linebacker, letting the running back cut off of his block and take off for a 33-yard gain. On this play, we'll see how a different blocking scheme works to attack the widened defender to the opposite side. Let's start this a little bit before the snap to explain Arkansas's alignment here. Notice that at this point, Ole Miss has an H-back standing to the left side of the formation, and so Arkansas is setting their front with the defensive end of that side widened. This means that the defensive tackle at the bottom of the screen will be the pinch defender. Before the snap, the H-back is going to come across the formation to the opposite side, but as we also saw in an earlier play, Arkansas does not reset their front with this motion, and so the wide guy and the pinch guy are going to stay in the same spot. On this play, the Rebels are going to attack toward that widened defensive end to the left side of the formation. Now obviously, if that guy's going to play outside of the tackle like this, then you're not going to be able to run down G, because your tackle won't have the angle that he needs to seal him off to the inside. If you're attacking this side then, then you need a different blocking scheme, and in this case, Old Miss is going to run a zone lead play, so the offensive line's all going to block zone to the left. The idea here is that if that defensive end wants to sit wide and take away the edge, then the offense is just going to step left, kick him out, and let him stay where he wants to go outside. Meanwhile, the H-back is going to lead the running back up inside of that block, getting into the secondary and turning this from a nice gain into a 34-yard touchdown. The final cherry on top of this run game was how Ole Miss could switch up the backfield sets that they used to run all of their different run schemes in order to avoid developing obvious tendencies for the defense to key on. Up to this point, for example, all of the runs that we've seen have worked away from the side of the running back's initial alignment. So in this formation, the running back's offset to the quarterback's left, and on every play that we've seen up until now, he's worked across the formation to get the handoff and then continued to a point of attack on the opposite side of the field. Given this fact, on this play, we might expect one of those strong side zone runs, attacking the widened defensive tackle down at the bottom of the screen. Now, if I can recognize a tendency like this, then you know that a savvy defensive coordinator can, and on this play, Arkansas has a nice call in place to attack it. Just before the snap, we're going to see this widened edge player jump down inside. When he does this, it's going to demand the attention of the right tackle here, and so he's going to come down inside with him. The Razorbacks are then blitzing a safety off the edge here, and with the right tackle out of the picture, that guy's able to pursue the running back completely unblocked. He'll be one of the guys to get in on the tackle here. If you're Ole Miss, then you need to find a way to break these backfield tendencies, and they were often able to do this by using their quarterback as a ball carrier. On this play, instead of handing the ball off to the running back for a run to the right like we saw in the last play, they're going to have the quarterback keep it for himself to run QB down G to the left. After the snap, the left tackle here is going to execute that down block, blocking back on that pinch defensive end and sealing him off to the inside. We can remember that the whole point of pinching that defensive end inside like this was to protect the linebacker that's stacked behind him, and so after the snap, when that linebacker reads run to the left, he's going to work fast to the outside as the force player, staying wider than the widest blocker and forcing everything back inside. When the guard pulls to the edge, that linebacker assignment's going to make it easy, therefore, to kick that guy out. This play's only going to go for 7 yards, but we can see right here that with better coordination, it could have gone for even more. When you make the quarterback the ball carrier, it frees up the running back to play the role of an H-back, leading the quarterback up through the hole. If the running back were to release up through this lane and block the safety, then this play might have gone for a lot more, but instead he works out to the same linebacker that the guard's blocking, and so the safety is able to limit this play to 7 yards. Throughout this game, one of the biggest defensive weaknesses that Ole Miss benefited from was that the Razorbacks really only showed two speeds. On the one hand, they ran those hyperlight boxes that I've been talking about with three safeties playing in coverage, but these structures didn't do them any favors when Ole Miss brought in an H back to the backfield and ran six-man blocking schemes. When they wanted to adjust to take away the run, though, they often didn't give their defensive backs any safety help over the top at all, and this meant that any problem or mistake immediately turned into a long touchdown. We'll see a good example of that right here. Ole Miss is running to the right on this play, so we know that they're going to be using one of those zone runs to attack this widened defensive tackle up at the top of the screen. The guy to watch here is this safety in the middle of the field. He's the closest thing that Arkansas has to a last line of defense on this play, and we'll notice that he's playing just seven yards off the ball. After the snap, Ole Miss is going to bring their H back across the formation, and that safety is going to respond to this action, either because that's how he's coached in this coverage or because he made a mistake. Here we see him falling to the backside with that blocker while also stepping up toward the line of scrimmage. 
This means, though, that when the running back breaks through the second level, that safety won't be in a position to make the tackle, letting the running back take off straight down the middle of the field for a 51-yard touchdown. In general, Arkansas' secondary just wasn't disciplined enough to play without safety help behind them, and Ole Miss was more than happy to exploit this weakness with a couple of huge misdirection plays. On this one, we're going to see a fake bubble screen by the slot receiver to the left side of the formation. After the snap, he's going to release out toward the sidelines, while the outside receiver fakes a crack block on the safety that's lined up over him. Both of Arkansas's defensive backs are going to read this action and aggressively jump the screen. The only problem? That outside receiver isn't actually blocking. After faking his block, he releases straight downfield, neither defensive back recognizes this, and he's able to get down the sidelines for a 67-yard touchdown. Here we're going to see another example, with Ole Miss exploiting their down and distance tendencies to take another shot downfield. This is a second and three, and on short yardage like this, Ole Miss loves to run hitches right at the sticks. On this play, they're going to run a fake off of that tendency, throwing a hitch and go to this wide receiver down at the bottom of the screen. Arkansas seems to be in some kind of a quarter structure to this side, and this means that the cornerback lined up over that receiver is going to be responsible for the deep sidelines. While he does have a safety next to him, that guy's responsible for the slot receiver in an inside quarter, and so he won't necessarily be free to help the cornerback to the outside. If this really were a hitch then, then it'd be up to the cornerback to take away the deep sideline, while the linebacker dropped outside and underneath coverage. After the snap though, we'll see that the cornerback doesn't trust this coverage. We won't be able to see his reaction from this camera angle, but as we run the play forward, we're going to see that wide receiver faking his hitch for a split second just past the first down marker. The cornerback doesn't want to give up the first down, and so he's going to attack hard downhill to try and break on this route. After a very brief hitch fake, though, the wide receiver takes off downfield, and at that point, the cornerback's aggressive reaction comes back to haunt him as the wide receiver runs straight past him for another long touchdown. It goes without saying that this should not happen when you rush three and drop eight as the Razorbacks are doing here, and so they really, really need to rethink the way that they're structuring their coverage and the way that it interacts with their run defense. Alright, that's it for this video. Be sure to check back on the channel for more breakdowns throughout the season, and I'll see you here next time.